man, torn between good and evil, always tempted and seeking redemption. Lucio Bobaco formed his vision of this eternal human drama into a symphony of glass, a unique masterpiece of its genre. The artist puts on stage the theater of life, set between paradise and inferno. His large-scale installation is created out of hundreds of single miniature lampwork sculptures, glass faces, chandeliers, and man-high objects. This film explores what inspired and influenced Lucio Bobaco and how this spectacular piece of work was created. What still fascinates me about lamp working is the fact that I am alone with the material. Allora, tecnicamente c'è una canna di vetro, una fiamma. From the technical point of view, I have a rod of glass, a flame at 1,500 degrees, a torch, and some tools like pincers and scissors. Glass workers call it tagliante. With the left hand you hold a rod of glass which is melting. With the right hand you elaborate the details with the tools. The left hand makes use of gravity because the body, the glass, is very soft. Perché, cioè, i corpi generalmente sono molto morbido, il vetro molto morbido quando si arriva a una certa temperatura. At a certain temperature it melts and pours down. Then the left hand has to keep it up. By keeping it up, you sculpt the bodies. Si dà la forma alla, ai corpi. It's not only about giving a shape to a body lying on the table. It's difficult to bring this body to life, which might be connected to other lives. Let me put it this way. A glass rod comes alive. The more glass you add, the more you get the impression that this new life reproduces. The pieces are connected to each other and form a living object che dà una sezione di, 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 di collegamento tra di loro. defined picture in my mind. Making use of gravity and certain tools, for instance pincers, I have to materialize this imagination. I have to do this because I feel it. Venezia when I was a child, Venice was for me like a metropolis. I was born in Murano. I saw these palazzi, and it seemed to me, I don't know how to put it, like Manhattan. It was an immense city with incredible architecture, huge palazzi, 
an explosion of architecture, of colors, of the reflections on the water. Every step, something new entered my mind with violence. But with the violence of beauty, I wasn't used to. Certain mythologies inspired me, others I invented. I also ask myself where my inspiration, my attraction to these mythologies, bodies in movements, comes from, that in reality don't exist. I think there's a sense of freedom, a freedom of thought. When I had a studio in Venice, I left Murano in the morning and returned in the evening by rowing with two oars in the typical Venetian way called Valisana. Entering the city by boat, I observed things that would be impossible to see as a pedestrian without any noise, without anyone following you, without timetable. Entrando nella chiesa di San Donato, Entering the church of San Donato, where I was an altar boy, I had a close look at the Byzantine mosaics. The colouring wasn't very intense, but the combinations of colours captivated me. And after years, I recognised that the colours of the mosaics were very close to the colours I used. When I take my equipment to the furnace, I bear in mind a project, and it has to be successful. Not 90%, but 100% successful. The work at the furnaces is something completely different to my studio. I use electric ovens, they have gas ovens, there's fire and it's impressively hot. With my tools, I do applications on the surface of the vases. The glass blowers who accomplish the classical forms do it their own way. I try to integrate my work with their technical culture. What I have in mind is new for the glass blowers as well as for their master. They've never done something like this before. Therefore, there has to be great cooperation and respect. Eleven years ago, I returned to the furnaces for some experiments. I didn't know how they would end. I tried to combine my theoretical and technical knowledge about the glassblowers' work and their daily activities, which in fact was small, with my techniques in lamp working. The glassmasters said, no, impossible, you can't do that. But in the end, it turned out to be a big success for me. The application of these lamp-worked forms on a broad and massive surface in the furnace were very convincing experiments. 
These techniques have never been used before. As sketched out in the early drafts, the center of eternal temptation consists of three clear parts. Paradiso on one side, Inferno on the other, and in the middle, human destiny, represented by man on his journey through life. Paradiso is based on the story of Adam and Eve. The world depicted here is one of apparent pastoral calm, with nymphs and shepherds and puti and angels and human beings. The flesh tones are of an ivory color, and the overall tonality is the blue of a clear Venetian sky and the new green of spring. The story of Adam and Eve's temptation and fall from grace unfolds in five episodes. The serpent is ever-present, but keeps his distance. In their last appearance, Adam and Eve are dancing together side by side, naked, positioned halfway between heaven and earth, the rest of humanity spread out beneath them. The characters find themselves among flora and fauna. The chalices on top are enamel painted with angels and flowers. There are angels and cherubs everywhere, giving the impression of being incredibly busy. The densest concentration of angels rises up in a central spiral, getting tinier and tinier as they climb upwards. Inferno presents a much livelier picture, portrayed within a similar structural framework as Paradiso. Its mirror image, as it were, full of turbulent emotion as the hell fires burn, their dancing flames encircling the damned. A satanic devil figure makes his presence felt everywhere and appears in numerous places throughout the scene. The dark pink flesh colors are in stark contrast to the ivory tones on the other side, suggesting heat and passion. The bodies assume more erotic poses than their counterparts on Earth. The scene would appear to represent earthly desire reenacted in hell. Whilst the massive figures are human, the devil predominates. In the upper part of the structure, four trumpeting devils fly around in an aerial ballet. Enthroned above this orchestra is the king of all the satanic figures, half golden calf, half golden human being.
Above the scene, there are three chandeliers, two repeating the main theme. And a larger central one with demonic figures. The central gray one, the most somber of the three, conveys a nightmarish scenario that embodies the artistic soul. The remaining scenery is made up of a series of columns and lidded vessel forms. The light-colored one refers to Paradiso. The darker ones to Inferno. Lucio Babaco finished his dramatic, glass-made vision of the eternal temptation of mankind in November 2008.